irregular contractions, very irregular, maybe five to 20 a day, and very low pressure as well. When we get up into maybe um, 24 to 28 weeks, most women will actually feel these contractions. Again, they're not painful. They're very low in pressure. They'll notice a tightening and then they, they pass. The fetus, too, is flexing its muscles. With room in the uterus to stretch and kick, poke and prod, it announces its existence to a waiting world. The baby's starting to move, and you could feel him turn and kick. No one else feels it. Every time I have someone put their hands on my belly, it's quiet. So, but I feel it. Good night, moon. Good night, cow, jumping over the moon. Good night, At 26 night, weeks, the, the womb is no longer a bubble of silence, for the growing fetus is starting to learn the sound of mother's voice. Good night, kittens. Good night, mittens. Good night, clocks. As it develops, the fetus will be able to respond to sounds both inside night, and outside mother's body. Good night, mouse. The fetus's world is getting noisier by the day. The structures of the fetal ear began to develop only five weeks into pregnancy. The ear is constructed from three components and in three stages. The outer structures began to take shape at eight weeks. Pits on either side of the head formed the inner ear responsible for processing sounds and maintaining balance. Not long after, the auditory canal and eardrum developed. Now, at nearly 26 weeks, the ear looks complete, and the three parts come together to enable hearing. Every day brings a symphony of new sounds to the fetus. The most prominent and reassuring come from mother the beating of mom's heart and the blood coursing through her veins provide constant comfort. By now, every part of the fetus resembles the child that will emerge. The brain busily twists and folds miles of neural pathways into a rippling maze. In the process, it stitches together the core of the child's humanity as its countless connections set the stage for thought, self-awareness, and reason. Growth of the fetus creates challenges for the mother as her internal organs vie for space in cramped quarters. Nancy sometimes feels out of breath. But nature, which produced this temporary problem, also provides an eloquent solution. Pregnancy hormones are making Nancy's lungs more efficient, bringing in 40% more air oxygenating more blood for her and her fetus. A major change is occurring in the fetal lungs, too. To prepare for life outside the womb, the cells lining the air sacs of the lungs begin to produce a substance called surfactant. It keeps the air sacs inflated, much like a soap bubble. As the baby gulps its first breath moments after delivery, the surfactant will coat the ducts of the lungs to reduce the surface tension and keep them from collapsing. With lungs now full of surfactant, this nearly complete little human stands a chance of surviving the world outside, but it's far from ready to leave the safety of mom's womb. His eyes are opening now. He's swallowing and making breath movements. He, he can hear us now. He knows my voice. By the seventh month, the pangs and stirrings that were once so strange have now grown almost routine and familiar. 
but certainly no easier to bear. They're a constant reminder of the active life inside. Well, believe it or not, even though some people don't think that I'm that big, I felt a huge growth spurt in my, in my belly. And um, that was um, exhilarating, but exhaust, exhausting, you know. Um, your back hurts a lot more, it's harder to breathe. He gets stuck up in my, um, my rib cage and he, he'll uh, have a foot or an arm or something up there. He pushes against the diaphragm where it makes it hard to, to breathe. Circulation suffers as the large uterus puts pressure on her veins. She feels occasional numbness in her hands and feet and cramping in her thighs and calves. After about 20 weeks of pregnancy, we encourage pregnant women not to lay on their back anymore. At this point, the uterus is quite a bit heavier and it actually lays on the blood vessels in, that run up, the, up your back and they both become compressed. And some people will lose consciousness when pressure is applied to this, these vessels. The huge physical toll can't compare to the euphoric anticipation of the birth to come that I'm having a baby, <laughs> that's the neatest thing. That he's a person now, and um, not an alien, but that he's, um, he's just a, he's an actual being, and he's mine. For Sherry, nine months of waiting has whittled down to mere weeks as she prepares to bring her baby into the world. She feels elated but uncomfortably big. Her breasts are tender and enlarged with colostrum. She struggles to balance her enormous belly. She's never felt more expectant. The last couple of weeks of pregnancy are an eternity. You pretty much have everything ready to go and all you're doing is waiting. You can't turn around the way that you used to. Spaces that you th normally fit through, you no longer fit through. Sleeping, switching from one side to the other, bending over is very difficult. But Sherry won't be this big for much longer. Inside her uterus, the fetus prepares to leave its watery shelter. Turned head down in the womb, there's barely room now to stretch or kick. The fetus fully fills the womb. Every contraction squeezes in around it. Now this sensation is stronger. The upper part of the uterus shrinks and the lower expands, making the uterus longer and narrower. There's little to do but wait for the chemical signals that trigger labor. It can start at any moment. Kisa, too, is waiting for labor to begin and to meet her new baby at last. I really do enjoy being pregnant. Um, it's a great experience for me. But I do like the end process, and the end process is a beautiful baby. You're bundled up in your arms. I think just the fact of, of feeling a human being growing inside of you and not being able to see the baby's face or, or really to just hold them or snuggle with them or, or just to touch them, I think that's where I want to be at right now. I'm ready to, to hold and cuddle and go to that next experience. For nine months, Kisa's body has embarked on a biological odyssey geared to nurturing her developing child. Now, it's time to bring that child into the world. Birth is, is triggered or in, is induced by the, the, the fetus, by the, the baby that's about to be born, and it's done so as the baby gets to a certain size or 
uh, to a certain length in the uterus.